Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is Zach over at NV Woodworks. So today we're gonna be making another faux burl mold. So we're gonna be making a silicone mold of this so that we can make copies of it using resin and add all kinds of different colors and effects to it. And in the end, what I wanna do with that is, is recast it in a, a mold like this. This is about a two inch by six inch mold. And you can make, you know, handles or bottle stoppers or, you know, all kinds of things like that out of it. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, now I, I've done a faux burl mold in the past, uh, not too long ago. We did the, this is for, for making spheres. So I copied this piece of wood. And the idea is, you know, so I can make a resin cast piece like this and then recast it in a pipe and make a sphere blank. So we can make, you know, basically you'll put transparent resin on top and you can make a sphere out of it. Now, in that video, when I made this one, uh, this is made with Plat 55 silicone from Illumilite. And in the video, and I'll link to it on the screen here, um, I mentioned that Plat 55, it's a very firm, um, not very flexible silicone. And it's probably not ideal for this type of project, but I had a lot of it on hand and thought, let's just go for it. Um, and I will say that this is definitely not ideal for this type of a, a mold. It makes it very difficult to get the things out because you can't bend it. Um, it was really tough getting the, the original out of this thing. I mean, it took like 20 minutes and I had to make relief cuts and all kinds of stuff. So I will say that that's probably not the, uh, the best use of, uh, you know, best, best silicone to use for this. Now, since then, actually just yesterday, I, I also bought some Plat 25 and Plat 10 from Illumilite. I, I had never used it before. And I recreated the, you know, this, this mold with Plat 25 and this was a lot better. Um, this is kind of Plat 25's in the middle range of flexibility. Um, but you know, you can, it's gonna be a lot easier to get these things out. Um, I haven't actually cast anything in it yet, but I'll tell you the master or the, the, this original, it was not difficult to get out of there. So um, Plat 25, I'm very happy with it. Uh, it's a very thin viscosity. So when you're mixing it and everything, it's, it's not, you know, like honey or taffy. Like some of these silicones, I, I can't stand working with some silicones because they're so thick that it's just a chore to mix it up. It takes forever, it doesn't mix well, and it tires you out. This stuff was like really low viscosity, very thin. I literally used a popsicle stick and it worked just fine. It was great. So uh, easy to work with um, and it's you know in the middle. It's a really good general purpose, the 25. Now today for, for this one, I'm gonna be using Plat 10 uh, because I've, I'm just gonna try it out. It should work really well for this. Uh, from what I've heard, and I can't remember where I got this, this uh, like rule of thumb from I think it was somebody that knew what they were doing with, with, with silicone molds but they basically said if you're making if, if what you're casting in the silicone mold is something very rigid then you kind of want to go with flexible silicones for that and if you're making something where the, the end piece is kind of flexible then you want to use a really rigid most likely you're going to go with like a two piece type mold um, where it's really rigid and stays in place and make sure that that flexible item comes out the way it's supposed to. I, that was, I think, the general rule of thumb that I heard. Um, but I've never really gone with anything that's on the super flexible side. So I'm excited to try the Plat 10 out today. Um, it's, it's the same viscosity as 25, so that's awesome. It's actually a little bit thinner. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, I, and I can't wait to get creative and make some handle blanks. So what we need to do is this doesn't fit. This is not what I want. It doesn't even fit in this mold right now. So we're gonna have to kind of shave this up, kind of cut it the way that I want. And then we'll make a, a little mold box and pour some silicone around it. And I, we're gonna you know, actually test out the mold with some resin. And I'm actually, I've never used this one yet. I haven't done a, a casting in it yet. So we're gonna do one with this. And what I wanna do is also kinda compare the 10 to the 25. If you want my opinion, 25 is definitely a good, good one. We'll see at the end how the 10 works for this kind of stuff. So why don't we get on it? We'll get this thing cut up, make a mold, and see how it works out.
All right, guys, so I forgot to hit record. I apologize for that. So, uh, but all I did was I just poured it, you know, in kind of a thin stream. I, I held the bucket up, you know, probably about a foot above the mold, um, dumped it into the bottom part of the mold in, in kind of a thin stream. And what I'm trying to do is not incorporate, not add air bubbles uh, and trap them in the resin or, or silicone. Um, and so I just poured it to the bottom of the mold, let it kind of fill up. And uh, you could probably see, I did catch a couple seconds of, of little air bubbles floating to the top. This stuff is so thin that it makes it really easy to mix, but it also will release air bubbles pretty well. So, um, you know, between, you know, the vacuum degassing stage and the, you know, now the time while we're waiting for it to set up, I'm guessing that most of the air bubbles will just, you know, float out and we won't have any. And that's important if you're going to be putting your mold under pressure when you're casting stuff in it, uh, the air bubbles that are trapped in the silicone will will deform uh, which will deform your blank or your your casting so especially if you're trying to make a reproduction copy of something this is very important if you're going to be pressurizing it if you're not pressurizing it probably not going to be a big deal though so uh, now we just got to wait for it to cure up uh, i'm just going to let it sit overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll try it out i can't wait to see how it works All right, so it's looking good and we got it all demolded and uh, just first first things that I noticed real quick, the Plat 10 is definitely more kind of flopsy, flimsy, you know, it's like blah, 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 blah kind of thing, um, which is, uh, is going to work fine for this. Um, I think that I kind of prefer the, the slightly more firm 25 personally. Um, and this is just, I haven't used either of these. I haven't, you know, cast anything in them, but I just before I do anything, that is my first kind of thought, is this just feels a little bit kind of too flimsy to me. Um, but um, it'll work fine for this. It's just, I, it's kind of a personal preference at this point. The, the other thing is, I think that the 25 is probably going to have a little bit higher tear strength. Um, this one seemed like it was, you could easily rip this. Um, it wouldn't be too hard. Um, so just a couple of notes before we even cast anything. But um, right now, let's get some resin in this. I'm excited to try this out. Um, I've been really wanting one of these kind of like, this exact type of burl for a long time so that I can do kind of handle blanks and things like that. Um, so we're going to do both of them though because I haven't used either of these yet. So we're going to mix up some resin and uh, I actually just got in some new mica powders. So Fred Wisson over at P-Town Subby sent me the entire lineup of their mica powders. And so they, you know, they have a lot of the kind of standard ones like, you know, blacks and whites and gold and all that kind of stuff. But there were a couple that kind of stood out to me that I liked the, the, the shade. Um, haven't really seen it in anybody else's, you know, mica powders. I just haven't run across any that I use. Um, so one of them, whoa, I almost dropped it, is camo green. Um, it's just a really rich, it, it is that kind of green, the, the kind of standard camo that you think of. Um, it's a really nice looking dark green. So I thought we'd try to kind of make like a, a little bit of a camo type uh, mixture um, for this burl. And then uh, a couple other colors that stood out. Uh, you guys might be familiar with interference powders. A lot of times they're called ghost powder. Um, a lot of a lot of times, like the standard three are red, blue, and green, and so they actually have interference violet and interference gold, which are you know you can get them other places. But um, I thought let's do something with those two because I don't really use those much. I, I do use red, blue, and green in my abalone blanks. Um, so what we're going to do is go for a black you know background basically. Most of the resin is going to be black, and then we're, we're going to do some interference colors. They really pop in black. So I thought we'd do that for this uh, kind of sphere burl mold. So let's get some resin mixed up. Let's get these two things filled up and see how they work.
Well, all right, we got the results, and man, I am happy with these things. Now, one thing that I, I realized when I pulled this out, and I and I just didn't think about it when I was pouring this, it basically it was poured in this orientation, and what I should have done was poured some little thin strips of the interference powder so that I could have some of that on the top. I didn't even think about it. Um, so it's all black on the top, but I can kind of see some of the interference powders poking out on the bottom here, and I think once it's turned into a sphere, I think it's going to be pretty awesome, but I still also think that I probably should have added more interference powder. I only really added a little tiny bit, and I think this would have been a lot cooler had I done a lot more interference powder like maybe a kind of a, a one-third, one-third, one-third ratio, something like that. But I think this is going to be pretty cool when we, when we recast it. Now, for the camo piece, this is awesome. This is as good as I could have possibly expected the outcome. Um, it just, it really looks camo, uh, especially this top surface. Um, so one thing about it, though, uh, the, the trying to get that lighter green, that didn't really come out in this. Um, and I kind of knew that, but I was doing so many things all at once that I didn't really have time to, to adjust the mixture on the fly. Um, I think you could easily just get away with just that camo green, the hot chocolate brown, and the, the black um, from, from P-Town Subby. Um, I think this is a good mixture for this kind of thing. I also think it helps that the surface of this is a little bit, it comes out kind of matte. It's not like super shiny like the bottom. And I actually think that adds a little bit to the, the camo. So I am very happy with this. I can't wait to recast it. Uh, and so we'll have to kind of see. But overall, the experiments were good. Now, comparing the Plat 10 to the Plat 25 silicone, again, this one was Plat 25, uh, a little bit more kind of stiffer uh, and a little bit higher tear strength. This was the Plat 10. I'll say the problem with this is it's not exactly apples to apples because these are two kind of different, um, you know, castings. But it seemed like the Plat 10 was a, a much easier demolding. You know, it just kind of popped right out. And I don't know if that has more to do with the shape. I think this would have been, even with Plat 25, would have been easier to demold in general. But, I mean, it just kind of popped right out. This one took a little bit of doing, uh, but either way, Plat 10, Plat 25 for this type of stuff is a really good option. One thing I do want to mention, though, I actually cut my finger. Watch out, you know, when you're demolding these things, these this edge is, like, razor sharp, and I sliced my finger when I was doing that. So just be careful when you're, you're demolding stuff. You know, watch what you're doing. Maybe even put on some gloves while you're kind of, you know, popping out that uh, the silicone and moving stuff around. You don't want to slice yourself. So overall, pretty happy with this. I, another faux burl. I can't wait to kind of play around with this a little bit more. Start making some kind of you know bottle stopper and, and handles type blanks with this uh, this faux burl piece. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this all come together. I hope you get out in your shop and start you know playing around with silicone. It's really not that hard to use. The Plat 10 and Plat 25 are extremely user friendly. Um, I had a, a very easy time uh, mixing and doing everything. They worked really well. So I uh, hope you give it a shot sometime. So if this is your first time on my my channel we do all kinds of resin casting projects tips and tricks and experiments around here so if you're interested in that kind of content definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted and if you're thinking about getting into resin casting but you're not really sure where to begin check out my ebook the beginner's guide to resin casting it answers all those beginner questions and kind of helps you get over that initial learning curve so you can get in the shop and start doing some fun resin casting projects of your own it's available on my website if you're interested so until next time guys thanks for watching this video and happy casting